I'm Jay Kingley, the CEO of Maven. And one thing that every high-performing fractional executive or consultant learns is what you should do is always a subset of what you could do. Now, Steve was a fractional chief operations officer, willing and able to handle any operational challenge a client could throw at him. When I met him, Steve was nine months out of his corporate career as an operations executive. At 53, Steve didn't feel like he could find another corporate job, but deep down, he knew he didn't want another run on the corporate hamster wheel, even if he could find an opportunity. Steve had a broad range of experience in corporate and was confident he could put that to use in his new fractional executive practice. His goal was to earn what he was making at his last corporate job but while working no more than 40 hours a week rather than the 60 plus he used to. When he first hung out at Shingle, Steve got calls from a number of people in his network, including those from his old company. They asked him to take on a variety of different projects, all within his capabilities. He was feeling good as he was busy, even if he discounted his prices to be sure he didn't lose an opportunity. Most importantly, his clients were happy with his work. Steve never needed to worry about getting new clients until now. Nine months of crushing it on the client acquisition front, and then it all came crashing down in 30 days. Steve never saw it coming. One of his clients graduated to needing a full-time COO. At the same time, his second client downsized their operations so they no longer needed his services. His smallest client, two days a month, was using them to advise on a project that was ending in a month. Steve never thought about building a pipeline because he thought he never had to worry about a pipeline. Being fully booked from the get-go gave him a false sense of security. In only 30 days, Steve went from feeling like life was good to being anxious about his future. Where was the money going to come from to live the lifestyle he wanted? How long could he live off his savings? And when would he be able to sleep like a baby again? Steve was great at operations. He put the word out to his network that he was available to take on any fractional operations opportunities or even some project work. Here's a partial list of the type of work Steve told his network he was capable of doing. Part-time or interim chief operations officer, efficiency and process improvement projects, installing new systems and technology to support the business, recruiting and training cross-functional teams to break down organizational silos, creating metrics, including OKRs and KPIs, and dashboards to track company performance, building a RevOps function, leading project work in teams for anything operational. And if it wasn't on the list, Steve would tell you to run up by him anyway, because he just might be able to help. Even better, Steve could do this type of work for any company that could afford his rate. Typically, he liked to target companies over $10 million in revenue, but would also work with early stage companies that had received at least their Series A funding. He was willing to tackle companies in any industry with no geographical restrictions. His goal was to encourage anyone with an operations need to reach out so he could decide if he was capable of taking on the work. Steve believed in the big tent approach to attracting clients. Much to his frustration, all he heard back was, good luck, and I'm sure you'll have plenty of work soon. People like Steve, thought he was good at operations, but no one understood the focus of his business. In today's world, no one wants to hire the jack of all trades. Being the jack of all trades implies that you are the master of none. And when you're paying top dollar to bring in a fractional operations executive or consultant, you want someone who understands your specific issue and has the expertise, insight, and wisdom to deliver the outcomes you want. You want someone laser focused on what it is you need, not a broad generalist who isn't going to crush it for you. It isn't about what you can do. It's about what your prospects believe you can do. 
The imperative to focus is driven by marketing, not service delivery. It doesn't matter if you can do the work if no one is willing to hire you to do the work. When Steve came to us for help, our first challenge was to figure out his business focus. It was harder than you'd think because Steve really could do a wide range of things well. The only focus you need on your service delivery side is to be sure you are good to great at what you are willing to do. But it is the focus on a well-defined target market, an ideal client, that allows your marketing to establish empathy. And you can't establish empathy if you don't speak the language of your clients. Here are the three steps to follow to successfully market your fractional or consulting practice. One, plant your marketing flag in an area of an important and urgent need for your prospects. Two, establish empathy, showing you know exactly what your prospects are feeling and what's at stake for them if this issue is either resolved or not. And three, demonstrate your insight and wisdom to deliver the outcome they need. If you have empathy for an issue that your prospects care about, they will say you get them, but will doubt you are good enough to deliver the outcomes they need. If you have insight and wisdom on an issue your prospects care about, they will say you're great at what you do, but they won't hire you because you don't get them. If you have empathy along with insight and wisdom on an issue your prospects aren't focused on, you're irrelevant to your target market. When you focus your marketing into the intersection of all three, an issue that moves the needle for your target market, your empathy, and your insight and wisdom, you will stand apart from everyone who says they can do what you do. You will be the only one in your target market they will consider for help. Otherwise, you'll be somewhere between unseen to one of many, and that is not how successful fractional executive or consulting businesses are built. And we started to create focus for Steve by getting him to articulate the areas where he was truly great with the type of work he had the most passion for, matched with the target market where he could bring the greatest degree of empathy and credibility. From positioning himself as the jack of all trades, Steve decided to focus on providing fractional COO services, no longer offering to consult on a wide range of projects for consumer goods companies between 10 to 100 million in revenue, that desired to grow at 20% per annum or more, where they lack the operational infrastructure, processes, and staff to support the growth. In other words, they were operationally rather than marketing constrained. The next step for Steve was to create a compelling message that demonstrated both his empathy on the important and urgent issues his well-defined target market was dealing with on operations and his insight on how to get rid of their pain and the outcomes his prospects needed. Steve put his message out on the channels where his ideal clients obtained information and engaged with the author and others. He used media that his ideal clients liked to consume. This started a process of getting conversations with prospects that needed Steve's help. Within six months, Steve was back to being fully booked, but more importantly, had a foundation for establishing a pipeline so he could get off the roller coaster a feast and famine that was making him nauseous. Steve now evangelizes the mantra that what you should do is a subset of what you could do. The more talented and capable you are, the bigger the difference between should and could. It doesn't matter how great you are at what you do if you don't have prospects lined up around the block begging to work with you. Let's have a conversation on how the focus of your fractional or consulting practice aligns with your marketplace. Consultants and other providers of expertise as a service lose too many sleepless nights worrying about where their future clients and revenues are going to come from. You've been told over and over that if you want more clients, you have to do more marketing, more networking, more LinkedIn outreach, more email blasts, and even hiring appointment setters to do more cold calling. What if instead you could get more clients by doing less marketing? Maven works with its clients to generate all the referrals they need to not only be fully booked, but to have a pipeline that takes the worry away on where their future business is coming from. 
Maven, the referral ability edge, do it with you advisory service takes you from random acts of marketing to powering your business with referrals and even all the way to becoming remarkably referable where you go from doing the work to a highly compensated CXO whisperer. So email j.kingley at referabilitymaven.com to schedule an introductory call to learn more. Mm-hmm.